This is the octagon house. It's really not part of the fort, but it's definitely still worth taking a few photos of it. It's called the octagon house. It's tightly boarded up, but it's just a little stop along the way. There's also batteries here, which when I come back in a couple days, we'll go ahead and uh, we'll take some pictures of them. There's batteries all over the bay. The military had put them up during World War II. Hell, as early as the Civil War in some cases, because they thought that this strategic port would be overrun by the Confederates or the Nazis who had U-boats along the coast here. The Ravens are coming out, but the Octagon House is a nice little stop. It's nothing major, it's boarded up, but it's a good spot to take a couple pictures. There is no house like it. There's an Octagon House in New York. There's only a few that remain in the country, and this is one of them. And just to stop by is an honor, to stand in front of it and say, hey, you know, look at this piece of history. The fort that we're gonna go see is right up the hill. I'll definitely take some photos and some video. There's a lot of forts in Frisco. Some seen more military time than others. Some were abandoned quite shortly after being built. Some of these sites have some dark history, accidents, deaths. Some soldiers go off for a swim, get swept up by the ocean nearby. Ghost stories, ghost ships. Anything typical of the rocky Pacific coast, which gets very foggy in the morning, has this eerie feeling to it. We're almost at the fort. There's about three, four buildings. You can't really go inside, but I definitely could get a few photos. We're almost here. It's pretty cool. Remnants of the fort. I heard there's a few foundations if you look for them. In 1885, there was a United States Secretary of War. His name was William Endicott, who was in charge of the Board of Fortifications. He issued a report, saying, and in the report it said that he would need a coastal defense in the San Francisco Bay. And by 1890, Colonel George Mendel, the Army Engineer Officer in charge of defense and construction in San Francisco, selected fortification of this 73-acre tract of land near Point Lobos, where we just originally came from when we were busy photographing the old Sutro pools. Point Lobos always belonged to San Francisco since the 1860s, by the way. And another fact that you, somebody does not know about this place, there was actually a cemetery here and not all the graves were exhumed. But this is the grounds of the fort, at least what remains. It's very beautiful here today. And in 1898, during the Spanish-American War, is when it ignited the, the construction of two buildings at this very site. And it says, the construction of the fortifications began, and in 1899, a battery and two 12-inch rifle gun mounted on a Buffington Crozier disappearing carriages were put in. And by 1902, it was completed. A third 12-inch gun was added to the battery of James Chester, which is nearby. In 1899, a separate battery for 16 12-inch mortars were installed. So, basically, you get the idea there was a lot of mortars, rifles, and guns, a lot of batteries, a couple foundations. There's not much to see, but look at the view from up here. It's worth coming up here for this view. Totally worthwhile. It was renamed Fort Miley in 1900 after Colonel John D. Miley, who was the father of Major General Williams M. Miley, died in Manila, Philippines the year prior. The two batteries the army constructed between them and a parade ground and a complex of frame buildings. Oh, wait. The basic complex was built from 1902 to 1906. The horseshoe shaped parade ground was open to the north and it viewed toward the Golden Gate, which is behind me. See in that dark corner where there's some buildings? Back in there. The Golden Gate's just over the hill. There are some intact buildings, so it is worth coming here to explore and check out the batteries. In the 1930s, Fort Miley's parade ground which since World War II had housed generally caretaker garrisons was selected 
as a site of the new Fort Miley Veterans Administration Hospital. The hospital today is still open. You can see it through the trees. Let's see. Beautiful hospital for veterans. What was the shoes for? Huh? What was the shoes for? This here. Uh, the bat. This was the battery. See, they had a turret here that spun. You see on the platform in the middle. It spun around, and the cannon aim see towards the ocean ahead. The get it faced the ocean, and they could shoot ships. And in in World War One, any threats from they would reach. Because they would, they would park along the shore, and you could shoot the guns straight up in the air. Blast the ships out of the water right here. See the view? The Army retained the batteries, but most of the buildings around the parade ground area, with the, with the exception of the ordnance storehouse, were demolished in 1934 to make way for hospital construction. And again, the hospital sits up on a hill, and then you have the fort below it. But due to this fort being constructed, led to the construction or the establishment of the Veterans Hospital you see behind. In 1937, when World War II arose, the Army had abandoned Chester, which had two 12-inch batteries. And they modernized this strategic fort. And of course, before they actually completed modernization, Japan bombed Pearl Harbor. Therefore, they didn't have time to do any modernization of the guns, but they did use these guns. And I'm not sure if they ever fired on any Japanese planes or, or ships, but I know that they were put to use during World War II, all the way until 1943. And they were here to protect any dangers of the San Francisco shoreline. Because like I said, this was, this was a major port, strategically for the military, and many of the citizens here on the west coast it's a densely populated area by the time modernization was completed it was 1944 and they had added a new battery and had two six inch rapid fire guns and they had steel shields around them rather than concrete so they could remain protected from any enemy fire it also it, they also were used to cover submarine minefields outside the golden gate where the bay meets the ocean. It says its guns were not mounted until 1948, and most of the guns were scrapped. Of course, they wanted to scrap these guns as well. Today, not much remains, but you can see kind of what it looks like. It says a 12-inch gun like the one found at the Battery Lancaster Fort Winfield Scott circa 1910 was used at the Battery Chester, or they actually called this the Chester Battery, a.k.a. Fort Miley. And this is what the gun would have looked like. So Fort Miley was a coastal artillery post and included a widely spaced gun batteries and soldier barracks. From nearby battery, Chester was built in 1899. Three 12-inch rifles could fire 1,070-pound projectiles at enemy ships 10 miles out to sea. There's what I was looking for, how far they could shoot at the other end of the post. Battery Livingston Spring Team 16 12-inch mortars were added in the 1900, designed to lob shells on the ships th with thinly armored decks. In the 1930s, old garrison buildings were demolished to make way for the present administration hospital for veterans. During World War II, a long-range six-inch gun replacements were added. All Fort Miley's guns have been scrapped, though they never fired on an enemy. There's another answer. Coastal batteries here throughout the base stood ready, a strong deterrent for attack. Basically used for intimidation. If you come down here, you can see there's some soldier barracks and so forth. It's pretty cool. It's pretty cool. It's almost nightfall. Just kind of wanted to show you a little bit more of the military complex. Mostly everything's closed up. That doesn't mean this is not a good urban exploration. You know, urban exploration is more popular in San Fran than you think. Pretty amazing. There's still some good remnants. 
to photograph. For example, like the stairwell looks like an amphitheater, but it's not. It could be the main headquarters area. I'm gonna try to go underneath. I'll definitely check to see if any of the tunnels are open. But this place is locked down because it does get quite a few homeless visitors. I do enjoy photographing it, no less. Because a lot of the buildings are gone with the exception of this complex here. Fort Miley was quite amazing. At least what's left of it. Nightfall setting in. I just want to show everybody. There's steel doors, so there is no way inside the base. Every way I continue to take seems to be a dead end. It's so dark. There's a lot of dark corridors and tunnels. That's what makes it worth looking around. Pretty cool. Nightfall is coming on in, so we're going to close my our Miley Fort investigation. Nothing strange, but it is a little eerie and foreboding here. And we'll have to see what our evidence turns up. This is Lord Rick. We're at Land's End, California, in San Francisco. Ladies and gentlemen, it's nighttime. We're hiking back to the vehicle. Believe it or not, there's a lot of wilderness and forested areas that surround San Francisco. It, you could go up into the mountains and spend days wandering, uh, like Mount Diablo. And I'm serious. Very well forested on some of these mountain ranges. And yes, you can camp near San Francisco, believe it or not. Yes, there are miles hundreds of miles of hiking trails i experienced some tonight i'm on one right now but we're leaving miley fort and i will say that is a creepy foreboding dismal place even if they never see no action at that fort it's a bunker so the base is built into the hillsides and you see steel or you see iron bars and iron doors sealing everything up there's just no way into it it's made to sus sustain gunfire from the Japanese or a U-boat from the Germans. Therefore, yes, it was very hard to get in. It was built to keep the soldiers safe and also built to keep people out, including me. But it was a good exploration, but there's a lot of tunnels, dark corridors. It's creepy. There's cold spots. You think you hear something. So, huh? I can't, I know. Nothing shows up in my video right now so i just want to show people the point it's dark we're in the woods even though we're in frisco this is a woody er woodsy area and back in the day grizzly bears wolves coyotes bobcats mountain lions all used to roam in here lions tigers and bears oh my lions and tigers and bears lord rick i'm out of here first day at san francisco was awesome can't wait to see what else is we get to explore and see anyhow it's dinner time we're going to dine in a nice, fashionable atmosphere. Something historic with great food. Here's the vehicle. Cool.